I'm coming out. I'm coming out. I'm surrendering. Okay? Don't make any more buildings. I've surrendered. Oh. There's nobody here. You know why I've surrendered, don't you? I'm surrounded by buildings. That bloomin' Tony keeps making them. What am I to do? I have to stop making them, won't I? <laughs> anyway, welcome to Tony Northeastern. I'm Tony. This is Northeastern. Uh, let's put that down. What can I say? We're into part two of building the canopy. Uh, we've put on the cornerstones. Now we're going to make a start on the fascias. So, let's get stuck in. Before we get stuck into the build, there's a couple of things uh, I'd like to mention. And firstly is, does anybody know what make of lorry this is? Um, it's from Base Toys, but on the box does not mention whether this is a Ford or whatever on the box. And underneath it just says, Base Toys made in China. So there's nothing to say what kind of make or model this truck is. So if any of you guys can help me out, um, just leave a comment below and uh, that'll be great because um, I haven't got a Scooby-Doo. And secondly, I just can't believe the generosity of this guy. Nick Forts, who sent me this parcel of goodies and he is a scratch builder himself and um, I find it amazing what people can make um, so this is what he has made he has made which looks to me like a 1940s stroke 50s dust cart for the old road sweepers. Now I remember the old square type ones with the square boxes front and back and they used to have two hoops on the side where they used to put the brushes. And uh, it looks to me like he's made it out of copper wire and plastic card and he's just added a couple of dust bins and a little bit of looks like thread that's been wrapped around there to keep the dustbins on the trolley or on the barra but that is a lovely piece of craftsmanship and secondly he sent me these now inside here believe it or not Are three magpies now <laughs> I was thinking a while back that I'd love to make one of these and um, Nick has beaten me to it and uh, when I sent him an email back thanking him for the goods I said to him look at least you've given me a template to make some of these so I can make some myself but uh, yeah, he's beaten me to it. And other things he sent me, he sent me a packet of open all hours. Um, basically, uh, looks like a pack full of brushes, old bins, uh, coal scuttles, baskets, and all sorts. But if I leave the maker's name on there, Jumble Lane 3D Printing. And if you look them up, you might uh, be able to get your hands on some of these yourself. Also, he sent me a guy called Richard 
sitting on a loo so that will come in handy for when I come to do more of the back lanes um, because there's a black back lane going into uh, this area here once I get round to it and that's from I don't know if you can make that out but I will get the link off of it and stick it in the comments below yeah. Richard Hill Wagon Works sat on the loo how embarrassing to get caught doing that eh? <laughs> and some Loctite Flexi Putty and some super glues. I mean, I, just, I was just gobsmacked when this parcel come through the post. And um, it just shows you the generosity of some of you guys. So, thanks again, Nick. Very much appreciate it. The final scene in the last video was the N7 from Oxford Rails. So, quite a few of you got that right. And you may remember this drawing from the last video because we used it to get the sizes of these capping stones and um, as you can see I've done a lot more measurements since then this is regarding the main structure of the roof but I needed to do this in order to find out how I'm going to make the faces so here we have a set distance of 297mm which is across the whole width of the station from behind the capping stones either side. And here we have a jig or a guide which I'm going to use for the fascias and when I'm finished with the fascias I'm going to use the same jig to do the spans on the oval roof. Um, I'm using 4.5 plastic strip and um, once I've cut one set of fascias on here I can cut the second set of fascias as well because the, the template will act for both sets because the only difference will be in this is that we'll have a left hand one and a right hand one. The right hand one will be on the southern end of the station and the left hand one will be on the northern side of the station. So it's just case when I pick when that's glued together I'll pick it up, stand it upright and then that will go on that side and then the other one will go on the other side. So that'll be interesting for when I come to do the glazing. Um, so, this is where we are at the moment. Um, I'm just cutting the plastic strips to fit the jig. And it's not a easy stuff to cut this. Um, as you can see, I've marked this for this angle. But I cheated really because I've already cut one here. And in theory, it should be the same there to there so that should go there as well which it does so I've used this as a guide to cut this but I've left it a little bit long so I can hone it down to the correct size when I start gluing this lot together so let's get cutting there's plenty to cut um, well, I'm seeing there's plenty to cut. There's not really because, as you can see, there's only 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 pieces for the fascia. Uh, that's at the 4.6. But we've got all the window frames which go in between these main uprights, as it were. left that a little bit long because as I'm gluing it together I can um, always trim it down to suit so that's that pair for that that one and that one got that 
the wrong way around. Right, as you can see with this piece here, this piece will have a bracket in there, um, like we have seen in the photographs. Um, especially at the start of the video, you would have seen a brace and bracket in there. But that will be made out of copper wire. Now, for marking out for the angles, I've measured the distance between this beam and that beam, which is 60.5. And so I've marked from the base of this strip to there 60.5. And put the angle across, but also brought the line down that side and that side. So I know where to put the blade when I'm cutting it through. So it's best to have a guideline on either side for cutting. And to finish off, just a little bit of light sanding, just to take off any uneven edges. Because you want the, these to fit as good as they can. Now for the fun part, putting it all together. Um, I've cut all my pieces. Basically what I'm doing is, this section here is just glued together. And basically I'm making sure it's square for when I put this piece in here. So what I'm doing is, I've, that's square, so I'm just going to put a little bit of tape there, just to hold it in place. As you can see, it's moving all over the place at the moment. And that's got to be perfectly square. Because... Because it's the main thing you see when you come into the station, so it has to be square. And it has to be along that line as well. And that then should just fit in there. See what I should have done first. It's marked where the glue's gonna go. Well, that section's got to be square now. Right, we shall leave that to dry for a little bit. And here we have the first fascia framework done. Um, all that's left to do now is to add the glazing window frames, as it were. So yeah, I've still got the one to do at the other end. So, I shall carry on. So off camera, um, I've been doing one little section at a time. So once one bit's sort of semi gone off, I've just pushed it backwards and forwards to slacken it off the jig, rather than trying to lift it, because if you lift it, you guarantee you're going to break the joints. So basically that's what I've been doing um, off camera, to keep these in line with the lines as it were. And then once 
once you've lifted it off and you've you've cleaned up that end as best you could you can put them back onto your jig and line everything back up and then put some bits of tape back on and then uh, continue with the other half Hopefully you'll end up with an identical one. We have finished for the jig for the moment but that will come back into use later on. Um, so the thing we want to tackle now is the window frames um, like what we have here. So this big bar across here I'm going to use 1.5mm for that and that sits just right in that corner there and then go right across the whole frame but obviously it's going to fit inside the frame so I'm going to have to measure each piece and cut them out to suit so the way I've done the way I'm going to go about this is I'm going to have to draw a line from that corner to that corner and right away across to get it the measurements from here to here and to keep it in line as well so that's the next step I have almost finished putting in the tie bar which ties all the frame together um, what I've done is I've stuck in a one by one mil strip in there 32 mil high and set it back off the face roughly about a mil and a half to two mil and that way it just um, sets it up for the rest of the window frames as well. I'm not sure if I'm going to put glass in this centre bit. I might, I'm definitely going to put it in these three sections. But maybe not in that centre bit. But we shall see. So what I'm doing now is I'm going around all the framework now. Just adding the inner frames before I put the window frames in so this is going to take a while but uh, as before I'm just offsetting them from the front of the window there of the frame just offsetting them by about a millimeter or two so you just got it on that ridge line see so I'm just offsetting it by about a millimetre. Keeping them flush on the inside so the glass can sit on there. Just straighten that up a little bit. It's flush on the inside. It's one done. As you can see there, it's just offset. I have now started to add the window frames, if you like, for the glazing here and here. Now then, on closer inspection of the photographs, these four areas here don't have glass in, but the framework continues across. These window panes continue across, but with no glass in. Even the black and white photograph you have seen before, which I'll show you again, does not have the glass in. Now this was taken in the 1940s. As you can see there's no glass in there but the paneling continues across. You can see right into the um, roof in there. So all this would have been open. 
even on the coloured one as you saw as part of the intro you can only see the glass in this area here where it covers the platform so I shall continue putting in the beading around the edges here it's like uh, one of those I feel like one of those ever ready batteries just keep on going and going and going so each piece has to be measured and cut to fit and uh, It's taking forever, but we'll get there. So as I'm gluing these pieces in, I've got uh, a song going around in my head. How many of you remember the Dennis Roussos singer back from the 70s who had that hit forever and ever? That's what I've got in my head at the minute because it seems to be taking forever and ever the only thing is I'm not on a sunny beach but it's all part of the fun it's all part of the cunning plan there's another one in another piece of beading I bet you're all singing that now aren't you forever and ever and ever I'll stick this one in and there'll be more to come. Hmm. Right, we've almost come to the end of the video, so I just thought I'd show you what these faces are going to look like. Um, and what's to come. And hopefully next week we'll... Um, have the black and white flag out saying that we've come to the end of building these fascias. Um so that's the that's where we are with the southern one so if we move up the station and have a look at the northern one it hasn't progressed as much as the southern one but with this one you can see the panes slowly moving across um, so that just gives you an idea of what that's going to look like right and I think that's all from me now and I uh, hope you've enjoyed what you've seen and uh, we'll see you again next week bye for now bye